Hey guys, I'm Mel, and today I'm going to do my September wrap up. September was a very interesting month. I actually read like 19 books. I read some books that were very easy to read. I read a lot of audiobooks, which I haven't done before, and that sped up my reading. So let's just start with the wrap up. The first book that I read is The Grace Keepers by Christy Logan, and I already read this with Katie from Katie Loves to Read. This takes place in a world that's full of water and follows a girl who lives as a circus performer on water and another girl who works as a grace keeper on land and at some points their paths collide. This book was extremely atmospheric, I enjoyed reading it a lot. It really has the capacity to transport you to this world and interest you in the character's adventures. It was definitely very original and it had the potential to be a much larger world than the one we get to see in the book. I kind of like that it didn't give you all the answers though. I gave it four stars. Then I read the two books in the fifth season series, The Fifth Season and The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemison. We are introduced to this world that has been constantly shattered by violent geological forces for thousands of years and it follows three characters. I think these books make you work for information, but it's worth every minute of it. The world is extremely intricate and you're always learning new things. The history and the belief system behind the plot, the ideologies that they teach people in this world, were not far from the ideologies that we are constantly force-fed by the media and the government. It reinforced and validated the idea that there are people who are always going to have people above them, that is going to have all the power and that they are going to tell them what to do, what to say and what to think. These are definitely two of my new favorite fantasy books and I gave both of them five stars. Then I read the two last books in the Spinster's Club series by Holly Bourne, How Hard Can Love Be and What's a Girl Gotta Do. How Hard Can Love Be follows Amber when she moves from England to America to work in this summer camp that is run by her mother. These books overall are very realistic and hilarious. They are also smart, they have a lot of adventure with the side of feminism. The character development in this book in particular was fantastic because even though she starts the book being strong and complex, she has a lot of things to learn. My favorite thing about this book in particular was the combination between the humor and the feminism and all the things that they are constantly learning. So I gave this one four stars. What's the girl gonna do follows Lottie, who after some realizations of the sexist world we live in, she decides to do this project where she calls out all the instances of sexism that she sees in her daily life. This was my favorite book of the series by far. It's such an empowering book and it made me want to hug Lottie all the time. I adore how unapologetic she is about her beliefs and her future and how she uses her anger and her sadness to fire her up, to speak up. Feminism is about the little acts and the big acts and how they can change the world little by little. But there is definitely a message in this book that the world won't change unless you speak up and do things to try to change it. The subject of intersectionality is finally talked about in this book and it could have been more talked about. So I think these books could be better, but they are definitely a step up for the YA game. So I gave this one five stars. Then I read Out on Good Behavior by Dalia Adler. This is about the girl who doesn't want any commitments until she meets this great girl who is going to make her rethink everything she believes is true. The relationships and the friendship in this book were my favorite part. They were extremely realistic. The main character is pansexual and is talked about a lot in the book, but the main subject in this book is how different people's experiences are with their sexuality and their coming out. And even though the main characters were completely different, they understand each other and we see them grow and develop and help each other. And I gave it four stars. Then I read Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas. This is the fifth book of the Throne of Glass series. So listen, I understand this series is not perfect. I think there is a lot of room for improvement. But when I was reading this and 
all the epicness that was this book, I could not think of not giving it five stars while acknowledging all the problematic things that this series has. I know there's been a lot of talk about the diversity in this book in particular. If you're so upset about the lack of diversity in Throne of Glass, go and pick up a diverse book because it's not going to come to you, you have to go and look for the diverse books. This book had a completely different feel than the other books, but to me it was very similar to The Assassin's Blade, which is one of my favorites of the series, since it's very adventure oriented. The romance in this book is very heavy, but since I don't ship anyone and I don't really care about the romance, I simply repress it. This book is much more than who is sleeping with whom. The political games in this book were so well done and so interesting. I do believe Selena's character is going in a complete different direction and I kind of love it, but I appreciate her character in a completely different way after this book. So I give this one five stars. Then I reread one of my favorite books and that is Aristotle and Dante Discovered the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alire Sands. And I listened to this on audiobook. This is about Ari and Dante and their relationship throughout the summer and the discovery of different things about themselves and the world surrounding them. I like this book even more now. The narration by Lin Manuel Miranda was fantastic, but at some point I forgot that he was the one talking and I got so into the book, like the first time. This is a book about different types of relationships, about self-discovery, the acceptance of heritage, culture and identities, about anger, pain and heartbreak, but also love and self care so obviously I gave it five stars. Then I read Georgia Peaches and Other Forbidden Fruits by J. Robin Brown. This is about Joanna who moves to a new town and even though she's out as a lesbian her father asks her to lay low for that last year because the new town is not very accepting. I thought this book was really cute and it presented a lot of very important discussions for the LGBT plus community. The talk about queerness, religion and self-acceptance is very strong and it talks about how the journey doesn't end when you come out. It's a constant thing. Unfortunately, I didn't connect with the characters that much. I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. Then it was the Diversathon and I already have a wrap up for that. So I'm just going to mention the books that I read. I read Homegoing by Yaa Jassy and I gave it 5 stars. Then I read Radio Silence by Iris Osman and I gave it 5 stars. Then I read Shelter by Jung Yoon and I gave it 4 stars. And then I read Just Visiting by Dali Adler and I gave it 3 stars. After that, I reread Six of Crows and I read Crooked King by Lee Bardugo. Rereading Six of Crows and listening to it on audiobook gave me a new appreciation for this book and for all the things I missed when I read it the first time. It also made me have all the information fresh in my mind to read Crooked Kingdom. Crooked Kingdom to me was a very satisfying ending. I love how Lee Bardugo constructs these characters from the ground up. I love how they plan things and how their minds work and how they put them together and how they recognize each other's abilities to accomplish impossible things. I appreciate this book so much with these six people with so different backgrounds that are racially diverse, that have disabilities, that are dealing with PTSD, with moral and ethical decisions, with their religious views or lack thereof that are trying to find redemption and penance. The fact that they kick so much ass and that they are so smart, it's so brilliant. And I obviously gave five stars to both of them. After that, it was the Roll Doll read along. I'm just going to talk a little bit about them because I don't really have a lot to say. The first book I read was Fantastic Mr. Fox, which is about the fox who is trying to provide for his family. But these farmers are trying to catch him. James and the Giant Peach is about James and a giant peach that grows in his garden and all the adventures that come from that. And after that I read Matilda who is about a girl who lives in this terrible house but that has some brilliant powers. I think the things that all these books have in common is how much deeper they are than they actually seem at first sight. It's about the talks about values and bravery and the decision to take your life in your hands. So I gave Fantastic Mr. Fox and Matilda 4 stars and James and the Giant Peach 3 stars. 
And finally, I read It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. This is about a girl who on the night of her father's funeral, she meets this guy. And it's about their relationship, while also she remembers her first relationship. I didn't know anything about this book before I read it, and I think that is the best way to go into this book. I think overall, the topics that were talked in this book were extremely important, and Colleen Hoover did a good job tackling them. She has the ability to write realistic characters Characters and realistic feelings. But at the same time, I had some problems with the little things. I think she uses marginalized characters as plot device. I think if you're going to talk about these things, if you're going to have a character who is homeless, you should actually tackle that subject in a right way. Or if you're going to have a gay character, you should actually give him a personality and a storyline. They shouldn't be there as accessories for the main plotline. I gave it three stars. So yeah, that was my September. Yeah, that's everything for today. Hope you liked this. If you did subscribe, I will see you when I see you. Bye.